Yo, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> I um, wanted to talk today on this blog about um, high and low sci-fi um, and black people and the things that we, uh, I don't know, how we respond in this post-black panther, pre-Luke Cage world, um, or post Luke Cage world too because Luke Cage set the internet on fire and Black Panther followed it up by setting the world on fire theaters and so forth so um, I make movies that I consider B movies which are budget movies low budget movies but even the budget isn't the bigger thing it is the over exaggeration of things to save money um, it's the um Exagger over exaggeration, it's the simplicity of certain things, it's the fully exploitation of a particular subject. So, um, what do you call it? Uh, B movies exist in that realm. So, you have movies like um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, probably Tremors. Tremors is not a a low budget movie but it is a B movie in its theme and see that's what confuses people a little bit sometimes they will have big budgets like Sharknado has an incredible budget um, but B movies for in general don't necessarily have that they're they're exaggerated and um, talking to people about that um, and also having my books in both film and um, uh, prose or or published books or my stories in both film books and even comics um, I have that conversation a lot you know I may make a B movie but then what kind of book is it you know it's still a same same story it still has some of the same elements same killing same motives same scenes you know um, so is it a B book is there such a thing as a B book so I also um, so in the conversation of sci-fi it includes fantasy and fantasy has something called high fantasy where rabbits talk to people and they are cool with it which is high sci-fi low sci-fi is you know um, magic happens but rabbits are still rabbits you know um, so fantastic unexplainable things still happen but the rules of the world are still the rules of the world you know um you're not riding in a car and a rabbit is driving in another car behind you that's high fantasy um there's also high sci-fi which is um where there are um uh what do you call it there are um kept to the rules of reality as much as they can, like The Martian, like um, Gravity, like Interstellar, and even Interstellar um, and Gravity and even The Martian are not exact, right? It's not even, like the Sci-Fi Channel or the History Channel or Science Channel, one of them did a more accurate version of Mars and, the thi and, and, and terraforming Mars that would be more like it. So that would be high sci-fi. Low sci-fi would be, you know, um, Star Wars. Now, Star Trek falls into low sci-fi, but you don't want to get into that debate with a Trekkie. But something like Serenity, all these different things, even Ender's Game, as much as it plays out the social science to a T or to a better T, the actual space travel and all that stuff is exaggerated um, or is fantasized about and of course you know with, with, with um, Star Wars having Jedi you know that that's already exaggerated so now why do I say that and why do I say uh, black people well when I look at um, the black women and black people who are winning awards for um, uh, literary um, uh, achievements um, N.K. Jameson in any of four uh, David Anthony Durham um, 
a lot of these people write, or even, you know, books that are celebrated, like, say, um, Beloved. A lot of these books are very um, Octavia Butler, high sci-fi in their practicality. Um, I think high sci-fi in literature is stuff that's not silly, right? Stuff that's serious, you know. Um, Octavia Butler's books are not jokes. They're not Sharknado. They're not Freddy vs. Jason. There's no Leprechaun in it. It's not King Kong. It's not Godzilla. These are these are silly B movie. Don't even try to explain it how they happen. And if they try to explain it like uh, Jason, it takes away from the overall fear of it or enjoy enjoyment. So maybe does, let's just say they're for fun, and then maybe that's a, a high sci-fi in literature. But it was in a conversation that I had at uh, Black Tasticon. Shout out to Milton and Balagoon for putting that on. Um, but uh, I realized that a lot of the books that are received well in the mainstream through mainstream publishers are high sci-fi. Not only that, a lot of the books that are written by black sci-fi writers are also high sci-fi. But then when I flip it over and I look at you know some of the resistance that we are getting to diversity in sci-fi, a lot of that is from low sci-fi mainstream white writers. Male writers, of course, Larry Correa, I think I'm saying his name right, um, David Weber. A lot of these guys write low sci-fi books. As much as military sci-fi tries to stick to the uh, correct um, or an accurate military tactical uh, response, they still many times get the science incorrect. So they get space travel and ships and all those different things where you get all that metal from, how you make a ship, all that stuff is fantasized about. But the military aspects of it, they try to get it right. Um, so when it comes to say um, white writers, I think many of the books that Bayon has um, a lot of the early tour books, a lot of the early um, ace books, and these are some of the major publishers of, of, of sci-fi. Many of those um, books are um, low sci-fi. I think of Florida's great sci-fi writer, Ben Bova. His stuff is fun, you know? It's to play out a certain particular answer a certain question, and that's it. Um, play out a certain scenario. Um, and they're low sci-fi. But, you know, if Larry Carrera, he has a group of monster hunters that are pretty much no more than an older Scooby-Doo, okay? His story is like that. Um, of course, we see, you know, Godzilla and King Kong, they're not Planet of the Apes. And Planet of the Apes was a serious or a more serious, a serious, sorry, a more serious conversation. But these are a legitimate um, genre in sci-fi. And until I was talking to people about my titles, Rashida the Zombie Killer, Welcome to Boss Ladies Planet, you know, um, even Thug Angel, or that, um, these stories are entertainment. These are low sci-fi stories. Now, I have high, high concepts in them, sure. Even in superhero movies or superhero stories, they may have some high scientific, uh, a high scientific um, device or conversation, especially with, with Ultron, with AI. But then they go B-movie with it, and it's <laughs> he's going to take over the world, you know, for sure, they're talking about celestial beings, but then they got Thanos, and he's just going straight exaggeration on it. So they take it so far that it, it becomes a B story. So, like, all that superhero stuff is all B movies, right? High budget, but B movie, B stories. Okay, um, 
But when I look at black sci-fi, at least the celebrated ones and many of the self-published writers too, we do high intellectual concepts. I was talking to John Jennings, um, um, one of our uh, sci black sci-fi intellectuals, professor of schools, um, on his partner Ronaldo, um, Dr. Ronaldo. Uh, um, he refers, Dr. Ronaldo refers to low sci-fi as aesthetics you know it's just there it's a beautiful picture it's a background but it's not of anything tangible it's not of any significance it's not important aesthetics are beautiful to look at but you don't really need them you know it's this is just background you know that's what aesthetics means so the, or that's what things that are aesthetic now for me Sci-fi is important. Yes, I love Planet of the Apes. Let's play out these things. I love some of the social commentary in Star Trek. Yes, I'm with all of that. You know, I'm down with all of that. You know, but a lot of it, for me, serves the purpose of entertainment. It serves the purpose for escapism. I don't actually really want to deal with the reality of my situation. I want to take myself away from it. So um, I was just listening to Charlemagne talk about, you know, Mary J. Blige's new horror movie of a police officer getting ghosts. He said he would like to see a story where the police officer gets haunted by a kid that he killed. Now that's a story that I want to hear too, because if it's not hyper exaggerated and I don't want the police officer to just have a bad dream, I want the police officer to lose his penis, I want his hair to fall off, I want his gun hand to get diseased, all of that hyper exaggeration stuff that happens in B movies and B stories. I think there's a plethora of entertainment that are waiting for black um audiences, if the writers in the literary world starts um, entertaining B-level stories for either to write or to publish. Now, how does that also relate to black people? I may be jumping around because I'm just in my car. I stopped driving now. I'm actually home, but I don't want to stop this tape. But I was looking at the impact of Black Panther and Luke Cage. And one of the actresses on Luke Cage's second season says she's watched all of the Netflix Marvel shows. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Punisher, Luke Cage. Um, I don't know if she saw Iron Fist, but because <laughs> Iron Fist was trash. But anyway, um, still better than um, Legends of Tomorrow, DC's TV show. Anyway, side, side note, side note. But um, And then I remember all of the black people that's like, I don't watch sci-fi, but I saw Black Panther. And I'm like, what? I just had a friend a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday. He didn't know that there was a prequel to, he didn't know about Civil War, Avengers Civil War. He didn't even know that Black Panther was a prequel to Infinity Wars. So he couldn't understand how Wakanda even fit in in the conversation. So I told him he's got to watch uh, you know, I gave him the Doctor Strange, I gave him the Iron Man, I gave him Thor Ragnarok, I gave him um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, I said, yo, you gotta catch up. But they're all B-movies. Um, so, that's all well and good, but we have an audience of black fans of sci-fi fantasy who are being pushed beloved. Uh, 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 Octavia Butler only they're not even told about L.A. Banks. Okay, L.A. Banks wrote low sci-fi. That's who influenced me. Stephen Barnes' early works were very low sci-fi. Street Lethal is still one of my favorite ones because it got me into it. It's about a fighter in weightless fight, in weightless um, boxing. So um, I'm saying all of this to say I think we need more low sci-fi in the black sci-fi community because I think it will be what will get us more readers. Help us get and tap into our audience. Um, fun books like like uh, the Executioner series, okay? Google that, look it up. Um, the Destroyer series. These were so popular, they happened every month. If you look at graphic audio, the one that is the biggest audio book, independent audio book company, they do a, a Outlanders series that is in a post-apocalypse, you know, Mad Max level stuff. You know what I'm saying? It isn't uh, intellectual 
you know, or a personal, emotional. Like a lot of times, they, you know, they brought me Stephen Barnes and Tiana Reeves' book, Devil's Wake. Execution, I mean, um, Deathlands is not that. Deathlands is Mad Max. There's hyper-exaggerated things happening in Mad Max. And that's what people, those are the stories that they're drawn to. I put those type of things in my books. And I've always done that. Um, maybe I'm giving away my secret. So what? I'm still going to do it. So whoever does it, they're going to be next to me on the shelves because I'm trying to do it better and better. But anyway, that's my um, blog for today. I think we need more Luke Cage books. I think we need more Luke Cage and, and Black Panther and Black Lightning, right? Low-level sci-fi literature. Okay, and it's not for teens only. Teens will definitely get in on it, but it's not for teens only. Some people think it's low um, young adult stories. It's not young adult stories. Young adults are relationship, adolescence, coming of age, you know, Hunger Games, Harry Potter. And that's big, no question, and we need that too. But for another audience, you know, um. L.A. Banks have a dis has a different fan base than Octavia Butler, and they are both worthy of our writings. But many times we only see the Octavia Butlers. We only talk about the Samuel Delaney's. We need to talk about the L.A. Bankses, the Jeff Carrolls, right? Oh, let's do it. Daniel Jose Older. He's a he wrote the Last Shot, the new Star Wars book, right? Latino. That's low sci-fi, Star Wars. Do we have that? We have Binti, you know, and an India Core, um, Tad Thompson out of the UK. These guys are writing high sci-fi that is probably on the level of Expanse. And Expanse is a certain type of book series, Leviathan Wakes. It's very slow, but it's good. You know, no question, it's good, but it's not for um, everybody. So I'm just trying to write, I mean, tell this blog for us to think about the other audience. Shout out to my man, um, Michael Ferguson, right? I think that's Michael Ferguson. I'm going to say his name wrong, um, out of Atlanta. He writes some silly stuff. It's black sci-fi, but it's silly stuff. And he's on to it, you know? Um, and there's a few other people. Uh, John Selby. And I'll probably do a list of people when I post this. I'll probably put a list of people. But Body Slick one of my favorite, you know, stories or one of the stories that influenced me. So anyway, I'm way over time. Thank you for checking me out. Took me a minute to get into my groove, but now I am and, and, and this blog is really good. All right, peace out.